One of the reasons why we are being hacked is we don't check the links we are clicking. In this video, I will show you fast, easy, and practical ways to check if a link is malicious or not. All of us know that emails are the most common source of phishing attacks. So here are the ways on how to check for malicious links inside emails. First, try to just hover on the link. If it's a hard-coded IP address, then there is a very high chance that the link is malicious. If it's a very unusual, odd-looking domain, then that's dangerous as well. If it's somewhat similar to a legitimate domain like google.com, it can be difficult to determine. So you need to copy it, scan it in VirusTotal, paste the link, and wait for the result. Here we see that the domain is flagged as malicious by some antivirus engine. If for some reasons you cannot copy the link, try to open the email as raw message. Then search for HTTP or HTTPS. From here, you can now copy the URL and scan it. Emails are not the only source of compromise. We can also encounter malicious links embedded inside the web pages we are visiting. Same thing applies if you are unsure, hover or copy first the link and scan it in VirusTotal. But this method is somewhat annoying if you need to do this often. You can install the official VirusTotal extension in Chrome to speed up things. After installing, you can right-click on any link, select the extension, and scan it. Here we see that the link is pointed to a hard-coded IP address which is flagged as malicious by multiple antivirus engines. If you are not using Chrome, don't worry as VirusTotal is also available in Firefox as an add-on. There are also quicker ways of checking a link without waiting too long for a scan result or leaving the current web page. For example, you can install browser extensions that can give you the results in split second. There are also AI-based checkers which can improve the accuracy. Another thing I find very useful is Total Web Shield extension. What it does is that aside from checking the current site you are on, it will also check the links in the page. It will do it automatically and you don't need to right click and scan it. We can see here that it's easy to spot sites that are not safe to visit. An alternative to that is Bitfender Traffic Light. The main difference visually is the verification icon is located at the start of the link. For me, I like the way on how Total Web Shield does it because I typically look at the end of the URL for the verification icon. If the icon is located at the start, sometimes I might not notice it. This is just my personal preference and may be different from yours. Last thing about Total Web Shield is that it will also show you breach information about a website, which is something we should be aware of. Attackers also use stealth mechanisms to avoid being easily detected. For example, they use typo squatting, which is a technique used to mimic a real legitimate domain. Let's take a look at this list of Facebook variations. Can you spot which is the real one? Well, as a starter, we can remove the one with dash in the middle. Then followed with this domain having number one at the start. We can also remove this one with double A. Same with this having double C. Another one with triple O and maybe the one that doesn't end with .com. Let's also remove the first one which misspells the word face at the beginning. Now we are left with two. Pause the video and take a look closely which one is legitimate. Were you able to recognize it? Let's check both of them in VirusTotal. We'll copy the first one. Let's do the same for the second one. So the first scan results is clean, meaning this is the legitimate Facebook site, while the second one was flagged as a phishing site. And when we paste it here, the domain looks different now. So what's happening here? To demonstrate the difference in another way, let's inspect the hex dump of each domain. Let's try the legitimate domain first, then followed by the fake one. So we see here that the first O on the fake domain is not printable, meaning it is not recognized. We can use Python to get more information about the character using the Unicode data module. The first O on the real domain is a Latin small letter which is used in English and Western languages. But the one from the fake domain is a Cyrillic small letter which is used in other countries like Russia and Ukraine. Although they are very similar visually, the code points are different. The odd-looking domain here is called a punny code, which is an as-key representation of non-Latin characters. This typo-squatting technique is an advanced way of tricking users. So if we are not sure, it is really best to use VirusTotal to do the confirmation for us. An alternative way of identifying a typo-squatted domain is by going into haveibeensquatted.com. Let's look for Facebook and wait for it to load. 
This gives us a list of domains we should avoid. It contains the IP address and the distance, which somewhat like a scoring system. Aside from using virus total, we can also use abuse IP checker tool. We paste here the IP address and run the check. Here we see how many times this IP address was reported. This means that you can also report an IP which will help the community to identify bad actors. You can also put comments to describe the malicious action performed. For example, this comment tells us that the IP address is doing a brute force against an SMTP service. Aside from IP addresses, you can also report domains. Being able to identify a malicious link is an important skill for our digital security. In this video, we learned different ways on how to identify them, such as checking with VirusTotal, using browser extensions, and checking an abuse IP address database. We also learned how typo squatting makes phishing attacks deadlier by blending with legitimate domains. I hope you learned something today. If you find my content valuable, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. See you on the next one.